Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be building a long range build. Now um, I've promised to do this a long time ago and now I've finally gotten the time to actually do it and I'm really excited for it. So I have two motors to choose from the Emax 2207 light spec 1900 kV and the T motor F40 1600 kV. Um, however, I'm going to keep the T motor for a different build, which it will also be a like a 6S build, like a you know battery 6S, not a 6 inch. And to do that low amperage, high K, uh, that high voltage, low amperage type of crazy builds that everyone, that new hype that's been out right now. So I'm going to leave those motors for that kind of build. Now, in this motors, we're going to use the 2207 Emax Lite Edition. Uh, these are 1900 kV, so I'm really excited to do this. Plus, the motor wires are just perfect long, so I don't have to extend any. And as you can tell here, the, the, the gauging is a bit thicker than usual, so that's very nice to see. That'll enable the motor to carry a lot more current or to have a better power delivery to the motor. Now, for frame, I'm using the iFlight 7-inch. I forgot the IXL7 or something. I'll leave a link to this down below. I got this a while back. I love iFlight stuff, and this is the frame we're going to be using. It's a 7-inch frame here. Uh, I will need to purchase some 7-inch uh, props, but I'll just run it on 6-inch props for now. For flight controller, ESC, VTX, and receiver, I'm going to be using the Emax Magnum Stack. It didn't test so well, however, this is not going to be a very demanding build and um, we will add a low ESR capacity to this build possibly depending on the room, but I might just do it without because it has a really nice LC filter built in which helps with the FPV noise issues with these crappy ESCs. Sorry for my language. For camera, we're going to be using the Runcam Swift. This is the first one. I bought a bunch of them a while back. They were on sale for 20 bucks. I just picked up as many as I could at the time. And this is the last one left over. So I'm going to be using this camera. And that's really it. So let's get started. All right, guys. So first thing we want to do is we want to start and in install our camera wires because basically everything's already installed here. So let's go ahead and get our camera wire, which I already got prepared right here for us. And this is going to be a hell of a quick build. It's just going to be insanely quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to install right there, as you can see, V in 5 volt ground. V in is the video in from our camera. So let's go ahead and start with, with the wires here. So I'm going to trim these a little bit off. Trim some of this off a little bit. All right, there we go. So let's go ahead and I'm going to flip it like this because I'm going to come with the soldering iron here. Or no, I'll just leave it like that. All right. So let's go ahead and start with the bottom most, which is video in, which would be right there. So let's go ahead and get that started with. Make sure the tip is absolutely clean. And let's go in for the kill. Okay. Just double checking. Perfect. All right. Let's do this one now. This is 5 volt. Okay. And ground. There we go. So now our camera is in place. Now what we need to do is they also provide us with a FR Sky XM Plus receiver. So let's go ahead and check this guy out. Now I know for certain the square on this receiver is the S Bus protocol, which is that square right there. Now if we take a look at the flight controller, there's these pins right there, and it says PPM S Bus. So this, in theory, should go on like so, just like that. All right, move these out of the way, and let's just solder these guys in. It's just going to be that simple. I really like this. I just wish the ESCs were better. I really do wish the ESCs were a bit better. Uh, we might be adding GPS to this later on, depending on how well the long range capabilities are on this guy. So that's something to take note of. So there we go. That's all nice and done. So we got the receiver, we got the camera in and let's just double check these. These look very nice. All right. And, um, we're done here so let's go ahead and grab our ESC and um, prepare the pads on the ESC here the 41 ESC so let's just quickly do that I'm gonna retouch those those are those have solder on them from the testing when we were doing testing on them so what we're gonna do is we're gonna retouch those a little bit just take your time 
I'm not in a hurry. And did you see the solder build up on my tip? So I'm gonna go ahead and clean that off. I don't know if you guys could hear those bells behind me. It's 12 o'clock. I couldn't see that one. I just uh, did it blindly. I don't like it. All right. There we go. I like to see a nice big blob of solder always. All right, let's do the other side now. As you can tell, I just switched it over to the other side because I'm right-handed and it's e a lot easier for me when I come in from this side here. All right. Beautiful. You need to just be careful. Don't keep the soldering iron too long on these pads because they'll start dripping. The solder will start dripping to the other side. I've burned a couple things that way before, so take that into consideration. You don't want to burn your first one ever. This is just insanely quick. This is just going to be a very quick build. All right. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and grab the motors. I'm just gonna install them on the frame and I'll be back and we'll just start solder. We'll solder up the first two motors together and then I'll skip the rest or we'll just do one motor together. So give me a moment and I'll be right back guys. All right guys, so as you can see here, I've already installed the motors and I have put heat shrink and it's yellow heat shrink. Well, it's because I ran out of, uh, you know, blue or red. So I just had yellow and plus it's gonna be easier to find uh, when I crash. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the first motor here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with this motor right there. So let's go ahead and see how much space and uh, how are we going to route this guy. All right, so this would be right there. All right, I'm going to have them perfectly, you know, aligned straight flush motor wiring. And right about there, right here is where I want to cut it. So we're going to do just one motor together. And then based upon that, I'll just uh, skip the rest of the motors. All right, so we got our first wire. Okay, make sure you twist this guy. Now let's add some solder. And we'll zoom in right now. So there we go. Nice. All right. Perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, twist this guy here like so let's zoom in all right so just make sure it's focused okay so i'm going to go ahead and grab my hemostats here and we're gonna have it perfectly aligned okay All right, how do I want it? Just like this. All right. So as you can see here, we have a little solder. Just clean that off right there. We could have gone ahead and trimmed the wire a little bit, and uh, that would have been that would have made it a lot better for us. But that's totally fine. There we go. Nice and beautiful. Let's go ahead and check the other one now. Okay, so this is supposed to go like so. Very nice. Now this guy. So this ESC, as you could tell, it's um, it's made to go on the inner parts instead of the outer parts. The pads don't come off the sides here. They're just coming off the inner parts. But that's totally fine with this frame. It'll work just okay. So let's go ahead and we're just going to cut this off basically right there and redo this wire. There we go. Nice. Let's go ahead and prepare this wire. All right. Now, this is why I love the hemostats because we could just hold it exactly where we want it and we don't have to worry about anything. So let's go ahead and see how we want this guy. We're gonna want him right there. All right. And then we can just hold him. We don't have to worry about burning our hands or our fingers or anything. 
make sure the tip is clean so you don't bump into a MOSFET because that, that's, that's not something you want to do. Alright, that's in very nicely. Okay, last but not least, I don't even think we have to trim this guy. Yeah, we don't. That's just nice right there. Alright, so let's just trim some of that uh, extra wire that was cut for us. There we go. And let's go in for the kill. Uh oh. It's very nice. Came out very beautiful. I really like this. Very satisfied with it. It just looks very clean. So, yeah, let's go ahead and check if the camera plates do hit. But I, I really love the design of this one because look at this. It's just that's all open space right there. And if we just go ahead and put this in. Perfect. Nothing. Nothing's going to get cut. It's just perfectly in there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and skip over the rest of the motors and then come back and we'll see what's the next steps. All right, guys. So let's see what I have done here. I've actually I've installed all the motors, as you can tell right there. And I've gone ahead and installed the xt60 connector and i used heat shrink to hold it here in place as you can tell right there and what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a zip tie to go through this hole and then there's another hole right there to hold this in place so this doesn't go around and since we're going to use a six inch arms we're going to be totally a six inch prop so this, we're going to be totally fine with this here i uh, don't recommend you put this off the back because that creates a lot of problems and i've done that before so off the side is always the best way to do it on these types of frames because the battery is going to be top mounted here all right so right now like this we're basically done all we got to do is just install the flight controller into place and there we go and then we just gotta grab our antennas here and then just find a way to route the antennas so this one we're going to keep it for last right now this is the uh dipolar it does come with an sma but i used it for something else and uh we're going to just quickly take a look here what are we going to do so what I'm going to do is one of the antennas, which is this one here, this one here, I'm actually going to tape it to the arm right there, just like that. This is going to be going straight this way. And this one, we're going to set it up somewhere up above the frame here. So let's go ahead and quickly set up our top plate and just take a look here. As you can tell, I already installed the camera into place and it's, the side plates are just perfect for these cameras, um, you know iFlight really knows what they're doing. I can tell you that right there on um, some of their newer frames. It's just uh, very nice. Every once in a while, a company will fuck up here and there, but, you know, it's just something normal. All right, so let's just plug this guy in and take a look here. All right. So that bottom plate went in. This one did not. I'm just going to just guide it into place here. There we go. Now it's in place. See, it's very, it was very nice how it just went in. All right, so let's just grab just two screws for right now and then just set up the upper plate here and then we're gonna see what we're gonna do with the antennas here. So let's just go ahead and set this one up here. All right, and all right. I might change out these blue screws to ones that are not protruding out so far just so when i put the battery it sits more flush and it just makes it overall better so this antenna here hold on just switch the camera there we go now it looks better move that all right so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this antenna here and i'm gonna go ahead and tape it to the arm right there and this one i'm probably gonna stick uh a zip tie that will go through here and this will just be heat shrunk with that zip tie up up top like that something some of that nature um, and it should be pretty nice so let me get that out of the way real quick we'll take one last look at it and see what's left all right guys so it is complete and this thing looks like a monster it was one of the easiest builds i've ever built in my life uh, all we had to do is basically just solder the camera wires xt60 
and the motors. And that's it. And just the flight control just sat on the place. The receiver itself, you saw it. Just those pins were already ready for us. We just soldered those on and we were good to go. And this thing has buzzer, has everything. So overall, this stack is very nice. You know, just the only drawback is I wish they used a better ESC. Then it would have just been one of, you know, it would have been a perfect stack. It would have been just like a beginner friendly stack because all you got to do is just uh, install the motors and the XT60 in the, in the camera and that's it. And everything else is built in. So overall, let's take a quick last look at it before we get its weight in. So this is a 7-inch frame, and it's just massive. It's It just looks so beautiful. Um, I did use the Runcam Swift, as you know. Now, this right here, this is the one of the antennas from the XM+. Plus. I left a little bit of extra slack in there, so when I lift this off, uh, I'll be able to work on it. And if we take a look here, here's the other antenna. It's just routed down there to the arm as you can tell it's right there it just goes here and then it's just held together under this uh, uh, tape and as you can tell I put a zip tie right there to hold the the battery wires into place so they don't you know go out too far and I've gone ahead and put a heat shrink between the standoff and the uh, wires together that was also a zip tie just to hold it in place this has like a little nice notch right here so it'll stay away from my battery strap area right there and it should overall be good now the antenna here I'll probably I will be changing it to the SMA antenna uh, however I need to order one it does come with it but I used it for a different build and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little zip tie right there inside to hold this just in place or maybe a zip tie to go up like this and then just heat shrink it uh, with the zip tie to hold it just like that you know it, depending on the battery I don't know because I need to put the GoPro on here also so this will stay away from my battery as you can tell here I have it routed outwards so the battery doesn't hit it and also I do have uh, hopefully enough room for my GoPro session mount and that's it it actually feels light surprisingly very light for some reason I don't know why or maybe I just got stronger no, I'm just kidding <laughs> No, but it really does feel light. So let's just see if I'm retarded or I'm, uh, I'm, um, um, am I tripping or is it for real? Okay, so it's zeroed out. And what is that? 324 grams for a seven inch. I think that's that's very light. I don't know why it's so light. The motors, but no, the motors are even lighter motors. I don't know, but that's pretty crazy. So 324 grams, that's just crazy. 325, so we'll just say 325 grams. So 325 grams for a seven inch monster. I mean, you guys have no idea how good this thing looks. It's just, it's just beautiful. And well, we're gonna have to wait a week now until we could actually take it out for a flight. So that's gonna conclude it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I really hope some of you learned something today. And uh, Consider joining my Patreon, join the mission, help me document everything. You can also use affiliate links down there. They do, they do greatly support this channel. And please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.